Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are going to discuss mapping the elections with Seema Mustafa. Seema, all eyes are right now on UP and Bihar because this is the bulk of the seats from North India. And let's face it, <coughs> it's a North Indian vote which is going to decide what's going to happen to BJP because they don't really have much of a presence in the South. How do you look at the first, the UP elections? Eight seats in Western UP are going in for elections. So what do you think is the scenario in Western UP? Well, it's very interesting because <coughs> this time, you know, there's been a very concerted effort by Ajit Singh and the Rashtra Lok Dal to get back the Jat vote. And Ajit Singh actually uh, told me that how they have worked very systematically over the last one year on that Jat vote because he's finally realized that he is losing that entire um, yeah, the constituency which his father had sort of created for them. So he said that they went to the Jats and they said, look, you need to be powerful here and you can't be powerful and have a say in who the government is or what government is formed unless you are a power vote. And that you can only be with the Muslims. And you voted in the past for the Muslims. I mean, this is exactly how he was telling me. And now you guys should come together. Uh, they also work on your field and you know this whole fracturing of Muzaffarnagar where incidentally he's contesting the election from should not happen and we should come back together. So uh, he is now very sure that the Jat is returning and this Maha Gadbandan rally that they had three days ago in Saharanpur, Western UP, Deoband area, there was a huge response. I mean people say bigger than uh, what was in Modi's uh, last rally in this uh, area. So it's very interesting. And, and the Jats came out to listen. You know, what you're saying also makes a different kind of sense because one is the unrest among the peasantry. And that has affected the Jat peasantry as well. They sugar are cane. Sugar cane. And in fact, there's a bigger issue over there that they have gone into sugar cane in a larger way, partly because of the threat of cows now, the stray cattle menace, yeah. which is now endangering their like feed. Gai Khagai and the BJP cane, cane is one crop which the cows find it more difficult, mm. shall we say, and therefore is less affected by the cow menace. So they have put in a lot of things on cane. But unfortunately, the sugar prices, both the international prices and the local prices, huge to, time it takes for them to realize it. All of it has affected the Jat peasantry as well. Yes. So really the part of yes. the peasant unrest which you have seen. But it depends now to what extent the communalization has actually seeped in. The last 24 hours always, you know, is when this vote bank decides where it's going to go. I remember in the 2014 elections and after, I mean, uh, in the last um, elections that where are you going to vote after demonetization in the assembly elections and everybody in this belt came out and said we are very angry and they've ruined us and then they brought Yogi in, right? So you can't say what happens in the last 24 hours. And much as we would like to underestimate communalization in UP, given the fact that we're all talking about how the, uh, the elections campaigns are on issues and they're being fought on real issues and economic livelihood. At the end, in those 24 hours, which is always crucial in the Hindi belt somehow, uh, uh, these guys have the machinery and the organization to be able to flip things kind of hate propaganda which comes on WhatsApp yeah. and so on, what it does. But you know, this other thing that you talked about, that Charan Singh had also built the alliance based on peasantry, but also on the Muslims and the Jat peasantry and the workers, farm workers not being split. But he's been able to also project a secular constituency for himself, as well as his party. That actually did fracture with Muzaffar Nagar and what the BJP has been doing for the last 20, 25 years in Western UP. Yes, and it was the Muzaffar Nagar was important because it moved away for the first time in this area from the towns into the villages. Yes. And it Communal, was communal, communal violence. violence. And the other thing was neighbor hit neighbor, which hasn't happened. It didn't, doesn't happen. Usually the people who come in and you know these outside. kind of things are usually outsiders. And in the village, in a village when you have this happening, even now there are entire villages where the Muslims haven't gone back. 
because it's your neighbor who attacked. So it is a fractured um, sort of constituency. So while they've been working at it, have they worked enough? Is it actually mended fences? Are they actually coming back together? But what was very heartening on a positive note was the Gadbandan rally in Saharanpur because you had all the communities there, including Dalits. And you had a very responsive, very enthusiastic uh, crowd, which was um, responding to all the three leaders, Mayawati, Akhilesh Yadav, and Ajit Singh. That's an interesting point because yeah. Jatav and Jat is an old, again, tension. Yes. So while there was a secular constituency of Charan Singh, it was a very casteist constituency of Charan Singh, very anti-Dalit and very anti-Jatav. That's what the Dalits were not allowed to no. vote. They were kept out of the booths and even if they came yes. to vote, they faced violence later. Yes. And this time, because of the Gadbandan, you will find that, you know, in these candidates who are, say, from not the BSP, but RLD or even Samajwadi, they're actually moving to seek the Dalit vote. Now, that, whether it gets transferred or not, will depend. But obviously, Mayawati has made it very clear, and the chemistry between the three was rehearsed. It was good. They didn't say anything which was wrong because they were really on show. And a lot of voters of that region had said that we want to see how they are in this rally before we make up our mind. That's an interesting point because this issue of chemistry between the SP and BSP has been discussed a number of times. That it's almost impossible for these two parties yes. to come together. But it was not so much the SP, BSP per se. It was also the, the Mulayam and the old guard who, when the incident happened in the guest house, if you remember, yes. the dark bungalow, and uh, that violence which was unleashed physically against Mayavati. And the response of Mulayam after that, not even an apology, apology, but a brazen justification, that was really what fractured the relation. So it, it's in that sense helped that SP is no longer headed by Mulayam, and he's really become a kind of... Uh, a patriarch, sort of patriarch who is given respect but not listened to. Not listened, yes, exactly. <laughs> and I think the Akhilesh Yadav's uh, personality really contributes to this because he's very soft, he's quiet, he's very, um, you know, uh, he's sort of really very generous in the way he uh, discusses or, uh, you know, the alliances. And um, it's a soft-spoken, very sort of whatever you want, Mayatwati ji, Behan ji kind of attitude that has really worked for him. Though he's a very firm guy, he knows exactly what he wants. He never moved back. He isolated that other uncle of his, Shivpal Yadav. He made it very clear that Mulayam Singh, you're my father, but it's got to be the way I want to run the party. And he's running it. Well, you know, this is, of course, the larger issue of dynastic politics, which won't discuss yeah. today. But the Congress, is it going to be a spoiler in UP, or at least in Western UP? You know, that's what the fear, I think we did discuss it on one of our yes. programs, but it's becoming very real. And apparently it's going to have a lot of uh, considerable impact on several seats in Western UP, which is going to polls tomorrow, which is on the 11th. Um, uh, and other seats also, which are going to follow. Like, for instance, Muradabad. I mean, that's, you know, something which you... The Congress had 1% seats, 1% uh, of the vote share in the last election. And they have brought in a very strong candidate from Pratapgar, Imran Pratapgari. While he is strong, is he is like a rock star amongst the Muslims. He's sort of into, you know, this churns out poetry, gets emotional, weeps, cries, and yet keeps secular. You know, his, his language is very secular. But he's the guy who's been brought in. Now, he's very popular. He's a household name. And uh, if the Muslim vote splits over there, then the BJP comes in. So there are lots of these seats where they have actually fielded candidates to contest the Mao Gadbandan, which is, which is just absurd. Well, that we have discussed last yeah. time, yeah. that the Congress seems to be thinking that it should be the key opposition. It is not thinking of defeating the BJP at the moment. Yeah. And that also seems to be the calculations that we cannot vacate the opposition space in states like I know. And, and if that's going to be your calculation, then you should have prepared for it for the last five years. And maybe today you've been in a position to do it. 
But you can't do it two months before the polls because you know it's you've got no organization in UP which is capable of mopping the votes. So at the most you will be a spoiler. You won't win the seat, but nor will the Mahagat Bandhan. Coming back to uh, BJP uh, to Bihar, and I'm not sure we should call it a Mahagat Bandhan. At the most we can call it really Gat Bandhan. Yeah, yeah. So B Bihar is a little more like Mahagat Bandhan, except the left has really not come into it. Left has some pockets of influence, but I think there's only an adjustment over ARA as of now, but no other seat, including Begusarai. What do you think first? What are the broad picture you see in Bihar? Because if we take the last election arithmetic into account, unless there is a significant swing away from Nitish, BJP assuming that it still remains a sort of stable voting bloc of upper caste uh, sections which don't see any other party in Bihar except the Congress, mm. which is of course there uh, with the Gadbandan. So what do you think that it is likely? Do you think Lalu is going to lose some uh, support amongst his vote base? Well, you know, the reports are conflicting. We yet have to go in and really look at the whole uh, thing. From Ara, it seems ML candidate is doing fairly well. Um, Begusarai, there's of course the CPI candidate uh, who, Delia. yeah, they didn't leave the seat for him, so he's contesting. Now it all depends on whether he gets the Bhumiyar vote and whether he gets the Muslim vote away, in which case he'll have a winning target. Because in, in Bihar, you know, it's not that you come in in these states as national leaders. You also come in against the local factors that are all That's ranged true. against you. I mean, there is a popular RJD uh, candidate yeah. who has a very strong, he's old socialist of the Lohia kind. He's got a very strong support amongst the Muslims. Bhumiyar, of course, there is a CPI base, but the Bhumiyar is also with the BJP. So Kanaya will have to whip up a certain kind of campaign, which he seems to be doing pretty well. But in Bihar, you know, the conflicting uh, story is between whether Nitish has lost, to what extent has he lost, and um, to what extent has that vote moved away from him. Uh, and the other uh, report is that the uh, Bandhan is doing very well, or the Mahagat Bandhan is doing very well, because they managed to get some of those parties which were last time in alliance with the BJP. So the shift is obviously towards them. And there is this Yadav, Muslim, Dalit kind of a consolidation that is making itself felt in Bihar. So you think that there could be some shift away from particularly Nitish's vote base? Yes. Because Nitish in Bihar had a non, shall we say, Yadav, but a OBC vote base. Let's put and a little way. bit of the upper caste and others and talking. And also, yeah. also among the Muslims. Yeah. He was regarded, regarded as a secular force. In the so, last election. Last election. And uh, before the last election, even when he did go with the BJP, his secular image was not really that dented. Yes. Yes. But this election, after the polarization we have seen in the country, the kind of hatred that is being sort of served on a platter everywhere. That, I think the Muslim has no choice but to move away from him because he is, he is seen as the grand betrayer. He betrayed a vote. The Yadavs also look upon him, by the way, as a grand betrayer because they came out in support of Lalu in the last uh, uh, election, parliamentary election. And uh, for them, it is Lalu all the way now, particularly. So they, there is this big vote bank which thinks that they've been done against. And uh, I don't think in terms of development, what he did earlier in the last year or two has not been tremendous development, plus the polarization. So um, interestingly, I always feel that Bihar is less communal and more casteous than UP, or not more equally casteous, but somehow less communal than UP. In the sense, it's very difficult. Uh, it's not easy to polarize people on Hindu-Muslim lines there because it's cut so deeply by caste. Um, and maybe the BJP hasn't been able to work there with the same focus and intent as it has been able to in UP. Well, UP, the BJP, the old Jansang base, if you remember, goes much deeper. And then you have this Aditya Nath sitting there, no? Yeah, but apart from that, yeah. you know, it's a much deeper communal yeah. base. If you take Bihar, there is a strong socialist base. And don't forget, there was to be a strong left CPI later yes, on. Yes. Say, yes, you know, it splits, splits. 
but even liberation, CPI. And it's got so a percentage CPI. of votes that you see. I mean, Always. even in Begusarai, the CPI had 19% of the votes, which yeah. is good for a party which doesn't have any organization there. Yeah, so in this sense, the people, therefore, have seen socialist and left politics in a big way in Bihar. In 60s, what we remember, the CPI was a big force in Bihar. Yes. So, and Eastern UP. And Eastern UP, but it, Bihar was really significantly yes. higher than Eastern UP. Yes. So what I'm saying is, BJP or Jan Sangh at that time, its communal politics was in that was contested by both socialists yes. and the say the communists, not only the Congress. In fact, Congress, as you said, used to be a casteist formation mm -hmm. in uh, Bihar, and that legacy still continues both with the BJP and with the. In fact, Congress. everybody, you know, over the last year, absolutely right. They played really deep communal politics. I mean, if it came from the Ram Mandir, and then it came with Rajiv Gandhi's Ram Rajya, and then the whole thing, it's been the laboratory or the playground, not even the laboratory, the playground of um, uh, polarizing, divisive politics of hate. So it's come a long way, which is why now when I speak of UP, I, I speak with the rider of how the communal element or that virus that has been fed into that state is going to react in the last 24 hours before uh, election, before polling. Yes, I think if the communal virus is bitten most deeply, it will be Gujarat and followed by UP. These, yes. I think, are the two Absolutely. states where it has really gone very yes. deep. And uh, the countervailing forces have, in that sense, have been more uh, shall we say, community-based in terms of caste formations mm. and not really secular formations who can really contest, therefore, not identity politics, mm. but really with secular politics, which yeah. always, you know, yes. is the really the counter, counter, counterpoint or the antipode, so to yes. say. It's secular versus communal. Yes. The minute you get it into caste versus caste, then engineering caste alliances becomes also a game, which the BJP seems to have learned pretty well. Very well. And I think what um, in Gujarat, the polarization, the fracturing is complete. You know, I mean, you have different colonies, people stay separately. Yes. It's like you've actually, and you will, uh, you know, when you uh, uh, cover the elections or move around Gujarat, you will find the Muslims carrying the identity on a sleeve and being ignored. They're not there. They're not they don't have a say in most issues. They just have to be happy that they are not being targeted. UP hasn't yet come to that point of complete segregation. It's in the process. And another five years will complete it, I feel. If we don't manage to exactly. reverse it. Exactly. So things are interesting. Very. We are living in interesting times as a Chinese. And say. fluid, you know, which is why it's probably being you, reflected in what we are saying. Because we really don't know. We can just tap the broad parameters. It's all very fluid. Lots of things are at play in UP and Bihar. Uh, but one thing I think is almost certain, the BJP is not going to be able to repeat the same amazing performance. It had in the 2014 yeah. election. So that is a gain for the other side, that those numbers cannot be replicated yes. today. Thank you very much, Seema, for being with us, mapping the elections, not only in terms of seats, constituencies, but also in terms of what are the voting blocks, what are the kind of issues on which the votes are likely to take place. It's difficult to hold a crystal ball and predict these elections, particularly this time because we have the recent incidents in Pulwama followed by Balakot. So all of this is also, shall we say, a volatile mix at the moment. This is all the time we have in NewsClick today. Do keep watching NewsClick.